Greetings again in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Pastor Major H. Gilbert Sr. coming to you this morning at our Sunday School Hour here at On the Wall e Ministries here in Alpha Vista, Virginia. We thank God for you joining us again this morning on this uh, uh, second Sunday in uh, 2024. Be beautiful lesson this morning, Faith and Trust. It's coming out of Proverbs 3rd chapter, verses 1 through 8. Our lesson this morning as we look out. A theme is faith that praises God. Our unit two study is learning about faith. And our lesson names this morning is to be able to identify the principles that lead to a blessed life, then explain why fear of the Lord is fundamental uh, to other uh, uh, proverbial uh, principles, and then make a plan to identify the changes in an area of our life where the Lord's will uh, by application of those proverbial principles be added to our life. So we uh, want to look at this lesson today, faith and trust. Proverbs uh, third chapter, verses one through eight. Our text read this morning, my son, forget not my law, but let not thine heart, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall be added to thee. Let thy mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them around thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. So shall thy find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. And it shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. Uh, this is our eighth verses of this chapter this morning. Again, we want to look at uh, to be able to identify the principles of a blessed life, then explain the fear of the Lord as the fundamental of our uh, proverbial principles, and then identify and change an area in our life to align more closely to the Lord's will uh, in, by application of these principles. So uh, let's begin into our introduction this morning. Whose influence? Who do you uh, regard as an authoritative voice in your life? Perhaps you consider a particular writer or podcast uh, or a teacher or, or such an influence. And when I think about the voices that influence me, I immediately think about uh, some college professors or a graduation. I kept uh, organized notes about the classes of those uh, professors that had given me for my own future references. These notes uh, even went uh, to me during the time of uh, his overseas ministry. Uh, and then I trusted in the expertise and the wisdom of those professors and wanted to ensure that I would not forget those principles of those teachings. And then one of the earliest author authoritative voices of a person's life usually is his parent. Those parents want to see their children flourish, and therefore they will uh, teach their children to be kind, thoughtful, and intelligent people. Parents are who follow Jesus also desired that their children seek God's wisdom and experience a personal relationship with Jesus. The book of Proverbs invites us to hear these teachings of a father uh, to his son. Regardless of whether or not our parents have taught us God's wisdom, we can learn from this father figure in our text today and apply these wisdom principles to our own personal lives. So as we look at this morning in our lesson context, the book of uh, Proverbs is generally attributed to King Solomon, who God had given a wisdom as being the wisest man in on the earth. And his wisdom was renowned all throughout all of uh, the world at that time. And over 3,000 Proverbs has been uh, originated with him. And so it was this ideal person to be able to write this book of wisdom literature. Then uh, additionally, the text att attributes uh, some of the sections to Agar or King uh, Lemuel. And how uh, we know this, nothing about these two men, but how uh, they were uh, listed as the authors of those uh, particular proverb chapters. And the text does not indicate when these texts were consolidated into the form of proverbs that we read today. But further, the text does not have a direct recipient. The significance of Proverbs is not found of the original writers or date of composition or original audience. Instead, the importance of these is how it communicates on how it makes up a list 
a life of wisdom. All people can learn and apply wisdom that is taught in this book of Proverbs. And from some readers, the book of Proverbs reads like a uh, disjointed set of oracles without any connection at all. However, five sections is divided as, as an introduction to wisdom, the Proverbs of Solomon, the words of Wyatt, the words of Agar, and the words of King Lemuel. And then the first section begins with this explanation of the importance of wisdom. After the introduction, most of this section is written uh, from the perspective of a father advising his son of the importance of seeking wisdom from the Lord. And from one exception, uh, uh, the point uh, order of the each pair of verses today's scripture follows the same pattern. First, the father gives his son a negative command. Second, the father gives his son a positive command. Then finally, the father concludes this section with a promise for the son, uh, as an example in Solomon 3, 2. Today, he says, for the length of days and long life and peace they shall add to thee by utilizing this wisdom that God had given unto us. Mm -hmm. All right, let me get back to my page here. All right, so let us begin with one law, one law, remembering commands, remembering commands. In verse 1, uh, Solomon is telling, he said, my son, forget not my law, and but let uh, thine heart keep my commandments. He's given them a command here to not to forget the law. Uh, the law of Moses were important to them today, and uh, we got to realize that when this father was telling his son, uh, he said, not the law of Moses, but don't forget my law. Every household has rules. And he said, whatever the law that we have established, don't forget that. And then he gave them a little bit further, but let thine heart keep my commandments. He want to encourage him mm -hmm. not to forget the law, but also to be obey the law. Mm -hmm. uh, the word of God said not only to be hearers of the word, but become what? Doers of the word. So he wants to encourage him uh, that uh, to not to forget that law. The law that gives you a standard in order for to live. A law that gives you uh, how to walk and how to talk. And then he's telling him not to forget that law so that it would be able to guide him and direct him through his life that he lives. And he said, don't uh, let thee, but let thine heart keep my commandments. Don't forget it, but let your heart keep it. Mm -hmm. Keep his commandments so that he can be able to uh, traverse through this life. So the son must be willing and able to receive the father's instructions but also to apply them to his life. He said, don't forget it, but what you have to learn how to do is keep those things close to your heart Amen. so that they can direct your way through this life that we live. Mm. Then there is a promise of life when you learn to keep his commandments. Mm. He says in verse 2, for the length of days and the long life and peace thou should add to thee. So there are consequences and benefits for operating within the will of God, operating within uh, the, the will of your father. If you be obedient to your father, the Bible tells me, uh, it says that uh, obey your father and your mother for your days shall be long upon the earth. So here he's, uh, he's repeating the commandment. He yeah. said, if you obey your parents, he said, for the length of days and long life and peace shall be added to you. So what he's doing is he's just repeating the promise that God has given unto man through Moses uh, uh, to the children of Israel. If we be obedient to our parents and if we obey them and live by these principles, that the length of our days and long life and peace shall be added to thee. So when children honors their parents, the days that their child may be long upon the earth, which the Lord has given thee. That's the commandment out of Exodus 20th chapter, verse 12. So he's trying to get us to understand is that peace sometimes does not uh, imply that it's an absence of conflict or trouble in our life. God said that we will have that peace that surpasses all understanding. Understand. That does not eliminate 
problems and issues, but he can give you peace of mind even though there is trouble all around you. All right. God don't have to put you in a peaceful state in order for you to have peace of mind. All God right. can bring that even in our time of trouble. So the first two aspects is that the father must be concerned about his son, but he also must be concerned that his son is concerned about his own life and to be able to walk in obedience to his word. So two virtues that we're going to look at, uh, to bind and to write. He says in verse 3, Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about their neck and write them upon the table of thy heart. He said mercy and truth are the two words of the Old Testament, especially regarding the attributes of God. Uh, mercy frequently refers to God's loyalty and commitment toward us, his people. God's mercy is rooted in his faithfulness uh, and his promises. So his mercy seeks redemption and safety for his people, but truth conveys the idea of his reliability. God, we can stand on his word because his word is true. And then he is faithful to do what he said he was going to do. He's going to show up if he says he's going to show up. And then he said, not only bind them about their neck. My wife is always uh, telling this little thing about when we talk about uh, the husband being the head of the house. And she said, oh, yeah, the husband is the head of the house, but I'm the neck. So the wife is the neck. So here he said, bind them about their neck. The neck is is, is how, uh, how 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 things get to the head and how things get from the head back out. So what comes out of the mouth has to go through the neck. What comes into the body has to go through the neck. Uh -huh, so here uh -huh. he said, bind that around your neck. Take truth and mercy and bind it around your neck so that it can protect what goes in and protect what comes out. So bind that law, bind it around your neck, and then write them not only uh, upon the tablets of your heart. He said, write them, he, he said that I gave you a, a, a law that was written on tablets of stone. But see, Christ said that when I come, I'm going to write them upon the tablets of your heart so that you can be able to sense and feel and know how God wants us to respond and how he wants us to re, uh, react when things happen to our life. So we got to bind them up, protect ourselves from those things that may enter into us. Uh, and they come in what? By through our throat, our mm -hmm. esophagus. They come through us, but the neck is there, ain't it? So bind the law around the neck so they can keep things from coming in. But also bind those things around you so those lips of yours won't be able to say things that is not uh, conducive to how God wants you to act. So bind them around your neck. But all of that is affected by what? Your heart. Amen. Out of the heart comes the issues of life. Mm -hmm. So everything that happens to us is coming out of the heart. So he said, put that protective shield around your neck, but bind that up in your heart. So you can be able to guide and direct. So verse 4, the promise of favor. He says in verse 4, So thou shalt find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man when you take what? You take mercy and truth and, and you uh, bind it around your neck and what? Put it upon your heart. When you do that, you'll find favor and good understanding in the sight of men. He said, to find favor in a person means to hold that person at high regard. Mm. Even children, when they follow God, can receive favor from other people and God. See, God will bless you, but he will bless other people around you when you find favor by God. God Amen. will allow you to be blessed, but he'll allow you also to be a blessing to somebody else. So the character develops when a person seeks the wisdom of God and lives in the obedience of God. A life of character will not only be pleasing in the sight of God, he said, but other people will recognize 
that God's spirit in you when they see it by the way you carry yourself. Amen. You know, sometimes uh, God's only witness down here on earth is you and I. Amen. Uh, uh, Ollie Wilson said that God ain't got but two sets of hands. That's my hands and your hands. Mm -hmm. So God has us as representatives here on earth. And then our duty is to reflect the character of God while we are here on earth. And that uh, is able to show a great witness to those that are around us. So the apostle Peter admonished his believers to be able to live in a way that leave unbelievers to be able to glorify God. A good name and a good reputation takes time to develop. But not only do these things provide a personal benefit to us individually, but they also are avenues to honor God and to reveal God to those other people that are around us. We are a living testimony. Mm -hmm. And in order for us to reflect uh, the will of God in our lives, we got to be able to trust him uh, to be able to order our steps through this life. Amen. Then one trust. Part three of our study, relying on the Lord. He tells us in verse five, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto thy own understanding. Here he said we tend to place trust in all kinds of things in other people, but rather not in God. But he said that best, this misplaced trust that we put sometime in other people can lead to fertility, and worse, it can lead to destruction in our own personal lives. Misplaced trust uh, does not lead to any lasting or eternal wisdom. It, it'll get you by for the day, but it has no lasting, it doesn't produce fruit of, of repentance, or fruit of the blessings that God has for your life to give you the favor that he just promised you. But once you lean unto his understanding, mm -hmm. then you are able to operate and live under his will and then receive those favorable blessings that he has in store for you. He said that when God's efforts are intended to result in his sons developing a trust for the Lord, the Lord is worthy to be trusted because, among other things, he is the source of our salvation to be truthful. He is the source of everything that we need, spiritually, physically, mentally, uh, emotionally. God is the source mm -hmm. of everything we need. But it will lead to what? Lasting wisdom if we will receive it. Amen. And Lord is worthy of that. When we trust the Lord, we they experience Blessings from the Lord. Amen. To display trust with all your heart. It means that we got to be what? Totally committed. I totally sold out. I, I, I like that song that says sold out. Ain't it? you got to be totally committed to the Lord if you uh, are to trust him with your all of your heart and all of your soul. And then he gave us, you got to trust the Lord. But what you have to do, you got to lean not unto your own understanding. See, whenever you try to trust God, whenever you try to receive the wisdom of God, you got a flesh that is combating that, that, that good spirit that is trying to induce uh, his word into your heart. You are combating that every day with the flesh because what God tells you to do, the flesh is always telling you what not to do. Mm -hmm. So he's telling you here, don't lean unto that type of understanding. Yep. Lean not unto your own, own understanding. understanding. Don't do that because that leads to fertility and destruction. He says, uh, broad is the way that leads to destruction, but narrow is the way. Mm -hmm. So we have to pick the right way in order for to have that type of understanding that we'll be able to find favor in our lives by God. And then he says, promise and direction. He's telling us what to do and what not to do. But he said, uh, once we uh, lean not unto our own understanding, we got to, in all of our ways, we need to acknowledge him. Mm -hmm. And then he will direct our paths. Amen. When we give God the acknowledgement that he is the father and we are his children, God will do great works in our lives. Mm -hmm. God is just looking for us to acknowledge him. To acknowledge God means what? 
to know him and to give him proper recognition for the activities that he's doing in our lives. It involves intimate knowledge of God and a willingness to, to submit our lives over to his will. We people submit to God. When people submit to God, they do not forge ahead as though God does not exist. Instead, they recognize God's power and the presence that he has in their lives and how much he can impact them. Mm -hmm. To those who submit to God, we are assured that he will what? Direct our paths. God is all-knowing. Oh, he is omniscient. Mm -hmm. He is all Present. He is omnipresent and he is all powerful. He is omnipotent. So therefore we can trust God. He's everywhere. He's all knowing and he's all powerful. So mm -hmm. what can we do uh, without a God working on our side? It is fruitless for us to try to live our life on our own understanding. So we got to be able to submit ourselves unto him. And then he will direct our path. Amen. Through Jesus Christ, we can trust God and he will guide and deliver us no matter what the nature of that path is. God will take you through some things in life, but that path will not lead to destruction if we are obedient to his word. Because he's going to lead us into a path that will be able to direct us to the good things that he has in store for us. Amen. Verse 6. He says, in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. And then there are two actions that are responsible for it, fear and avoidance. He said, be not wise in your own eyes. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. So he is saying this because of, 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 of our humanity. Sometimes we just don't fear the Lord the way we should. Come on. Uh, we, we fear our own opinions. We yes, fear other people's yes. opinions. We fear how other people see us. But mm -hmm. here he said, fear the Lord and depart from evil. So you got to fear the Lord. That means reverence. Don't be afraid of God, a fearful God, like when the children of Israel went up into the mount and, and God's voice rumbled and they became fearful of him. But we seek to have that reverential fear for him. And then depart from evil. Fear in God and love in evil, those are incompatible things. We cannot fear God and love evil. But when we fear God, mm -hmm. God will give us that ability to depart from them evil attitudes that we have sometimes. Turning away from sin. Turning them to God so in faith so that we can be healed. So you got to turn away from your sin. And that still is not the solution. You turn away from your sin, but you got to turn to God. And once you turn to God, then he will be able to give that, that repentance of heart that you need to be able to make it in this life. Now we get to promise and wholeness. Verse 8, this is our last verse. And then once we uh, 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 listen to our Father, once we hear the wisdom of our Father, he said that it shall be help to thy navel and myra to your bones. This verse begins with the Hebrew idiom that, that provides a, a difficult translation sometimes. The translation of navel uh, sometimes is talking about your body. He said that this is the body. He said, and, and it will give health to your body, and it will take care of all of your blood circulation in your bones, because your mara is how uh, blood and circulation get into your bones. He said, it will give you life-giving uh, uh, resources that, that, that gets into your inner cavities. Have you ever had something that got all the way down to your bones? Mm -hmm. Have you ever got cold and you were cold all the way down to your bones? Mm -hmm. yes. Have you ever got uh, afraid and you got uh, chills that came with fear all the way down to your bones? Mm -hmm. And here he's saying this, that you'll help into your navel, but then you'll have, uh, that will be marred to your bones, uh, that life-giving resource that you receive, that substance where blood cells are energized and body is given what is needed to survive. The author of Proverbs here would likely been unaware of the fact of how the body works, but he realized a nourished body contains mara and strength in its bones. A life of humility, fear of the Lord, and obedience to his word is complete wholeness 
in a person. So the son is promised what? Help and vitality when he follows his father's instructions. We know a hell that the person's status in life does not correlate to the quality of a person's heart. When people may experience wholeness and health in part while on earth, Scripture promises that in the future, when God shall wipe away all the tears from our eyes, he said that there will be no more death, there will be no more sorrow, there will be no more crying, and there will be no more pain. So God promised us that when this whole life is all over, that when we are going through all of the difficulties down here, that he is going to bring us into a place where we will have health, wealth, and Good things to come. Mm -hmm. That's what God promises us, ain't it? Mm -hmm. So as we conclude our lesson this morning, uh, a 2022 study showed that most people spend about two and a half hours daily in social media platforms, and they may not seem a lot of time when you look at it, but it's, it's a significant increase, like from 10 years ago when people uh, stayed on a, maybe an hour a day. So social media has become somehow the voice of authority for many people. And they said, did you see it? Where did you see it? And I saw it on the internet, or I saw it on Facebook. But sometimes you gotta realize everything on Facebook is not truth. It cannot be the voice of authority that you use to be able to live this life in this world. It is easier for believers to say that we are seeking wisdom of God when in actuality our voices influence our lives, other voices influence our lives, and shape our perspectives. And if we are filling our lives with human ideals and human influences and social media and all of those other influences rather than the wisdom of God, which one will have the most influence? What you expose yourself to becomes your influence. The more you expose yourself to things of the world, the more worldly you become. But the more you expose yourself to the things of God, the more like God you become. Study to show yourself approved. Uh, you'll be able to rightly divide the word of God if you expose yourself to the things of God. Leave those things of the world. Don't listen to the voices of authority of the world. Let God be your voice of authority. And then he promised you when you do that, that when you use him to be the voice of authority in your life, he said that favor and truth should be able to reign in your life today. So I'll pray this evening. Heavenly Father, thank you for the inspired wisdom you have revealed to us in Scripture. Help us to listen and also follow your word. Show us how to be more attentive to the direction of your spirit that we might live lives of wisdom. We ask this in the precious name of Jesus. Let us all say amen. So our thought to remember this morning, God's children seek wisdom of their heavenly father. So we need to seek the wisdom of God in order for to be able to live a victorious life in this world. So if we expect to live in truth and victory and favor, we must walk according to the will of God in our life. God bless you. This morning, may heaven have a smile upon you. Uh, we're going to take a beef break, and then we'll be back at the 930 hour for our Sunday, uh, our worship hour. God bless you. May heaven have a smile upon you for joining us this morning at our Sunday school. God bless you.